In this video, I'd like to look at a classic article on uh, the, uh, the ethical issue of abortion. Uh, it's a classical article, so some of the terminology is, might sound a little dated, I'm not entirely sure, but I'm going to follow the terminology of the article. And my goal here is to uh, look at this uh, and try to figure out what the argument essentially is that Sherwin, uh, that Susan Sherwin is proposing. So she wants to look at uh, abortion through what she calls a feminist ethics lens. Now, that doesn't mean that all feminists agree with this or whatnot, but we're going to have a look at what uh, Sherwin thinks that a feminist ethics lens looks like and what uh, the abortion issue looks like when you look at it through that. This article is an excellent example of, uh, of approaching a philosophical question because there are different ways to approach it. And she lays this out quite nicely and contrasts herself with uh, non-feminist ways. So, so the first thing to keep in mind is uh, this is her view as to what a feminist approach is. And I'm not going to say that, and she doesn't say that all feminists would agree with her. Um, and, and I'm not saying that either, but uh, it gives you a good insight into approaching philosophical problems and how they look very different. Uh, you know, depending on the angle that you take on it. All right, so uh, let's let's think of this first from uh, the feminist non-feminist approach. Okay, so the, the that's your big distinction there. And what what does that mean? Well, basically they differ over the attention given to the experiences of women. Okay, so that's your first one. And so the non-feminist approach, let's start with that one because in a way it's easier because it is a more abstract approach. And remember, abstraction, what are you doing? You're abstracting from. So you're, 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 you're making choices though. Keep in mind, when you abstract, you make choices. And so what, what kind of choices are you making? You're saying, oh, I'm going to talk about abortion in an abstra abstract way. And if you do that, you're making choices as to what is relevant and what isn't. So in the standard uh, non-feminist approach, which would be like a Marquis article on, you know, why abortion is immoral, um, he's very clear, right, uh, as to how he approaches it. He talks about the nature of the fetus, the moral standing of a fetus. And, uh, and how he does it, it's, 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 it's very straightforward and again, very abstract. What abstract? Well, it's examined without reference to its environment. So I'm trying to put that as neutrally as I can. And what's the environment? As Sherman said, the physical location, because you don't just run into a fetus uh, anywhere, it's in a specific location. So it's in a woman's body. So if you look at the abstract approach, that, says simply that this is irrelevant, right? So that's the, that's the first decision that's made in the abstract approach is to say that we're going to examine the, uh, the, ontol the, the, the ontology of the fetus or, you know, to regard it as an object or however you want to put it, but to analyze it in outside of the context of its, uh, uh, of its environment. And, and that is the, the route that we go to uh, figuring out uh, uh, what the uh, the ethics of the abortion issue is. So that is one way to do it, and that's how Marquis does it. And of course, uh, that has consequences. So all these approaches have consequences. So in a way, you have to be careful because if you set it up in such a way, which Sherwin does say this approach ultimately does, is, is you kind of rig the argument to get the answer that you want. And we'll look a little bit at, at how she says this non-feminist approach does tend to rig the argument. However, uh, she's pretty honest. She admits that she's kind of setting it up to get uh, more or less the answer that she wants. So it also raises interesting aspects of, uh, you know, trying to analyze problems. Can, you can't do it in a completely neutral fashion because you have to make choices of how to even approach the problem. Right. Think about many uh, uh, problems of conflict. Uh, the two sides don't even agree how to describe the conflict, let alone what the solution would be. So so think about this in the uh, abortion debate. Uh, you know, you'd have to come to some agreement with with, let's say, if you take one side or the other. Um, is it relevant? Do you have to talk about the experiences of women? Well, if you say no, then you're outside the feminist framework, according to Sherwin. 
So, so the feminist framework then is, as you'd expect, if this one's abstract, this one is concrete. And Sherman's very clear about this. You know, you have to examine abortion in terms of the effects of unwanted pregnancies, right? And those effects are, as she keeps stressing, they're about women, right? So it's not just a general thing, policies about abortion, effects uh, of unwanted pregnancies. This deals with a particular subset of the population. This isn't just for uh, a general discussion. So in that sense, um, uh, uh, you have to examine all of these things within the contract, within the context, again, the context of the experiences of women. All right. And uh, so uh, in, in the feminist approach, then she thinks there's something that's self-evident and, and, and she's very clear about this. And I think this is an important element in her discussion is that um, it's not just that she's arguing that you should take the, uh, 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 the experiences of women as your fundamental starting point. Uh, she's not actually making an argument for that. She says it's a self-evident proposition. So this idea that the principal concern in the discussions of abortion is basically the principal concern is the concern of the pregnant woman. So that is a definite priority right there that that you're uh, that the, the, the pregnant female is prioritized. Right. That's number one. And that's not the result of an inference. Like she's not saying I got an argument for that. So if you say, well, what's her argument for prioritizing women? That's her starting point. That's not the result of a, an argument. That's not an inference where she says, oh, here's some premises behind all that. She's not really doing that. She's saying that this is the this is the, the a self-evident proposition. This is the start. OK, so you can think of that as it's not the result of an inference, which would be a conclusion. It's a premise. All right. So so let's look, she says. Uh, uh, Sherwin talks about the role of abortion in women's lives, and she goes through a number uh, of, of reasons uh, for uh, abortion, and she denies that these are frivolous uh, reasons and, um, and, and, and so on. So her main point, though, is, is that regardless, though, right, she's not saying that, that, that women have to justify or give their reasons for abortion, because that, she thinks, is... Uh, is a threat to the fundamental concept of uh, of choice in this in this sense of uh, uh, of, of being pro-choice. That is that regardless of the reasons, the person best suited for judge for judging uh, is the pregnant woman herself. Right. So it is uh, a, a view that whatever that pregnant woman judges, she is the best person. To judge you may not uh, uh, agree with it or whatnot but it's not up to the pregnant person to justify the reasoning it is a choice that the pregnant uh, woman makes and uh, that's whether or not an abortion is appropriate is is up to uh, up to her um, and so that uh, it, it comes so when you think of that if that if that's a fundamental view that it has to be flatly up to the individual that decides then it is a, a sense of uh, the decision is uh, is an ultimate decision. It's not something that lends itself to uh, a judgment and evaluation, because if you want to say that it does, then the decision is sort of the result or, of, or it's like the concern of the pregnant woman is the product of an argument rather than the starting point of the position. Um, so they must ensure that uh, feminists have to ensure, Sherwin says, that this right to choose is completely pro protected, right? Um, and she's not saying, now again, some people say, well, you know, women are human, they make mistakes. And Sherwin's not denying that. She's, so don't confuse the, the, uh, the absolute nature of uh, the right to choose with some sort of infallibility. She's not saying that. Uh, she's just saying that that's the person that has the, the, the complete right to choose. And uh, I'm not saying that every woman makes a, a completely correct decision, but it is hers and hers alone to make. That's the main point. Nobody is infallible. Sherwin uh, stresses this. But just because that uh, some women may make errors doesn't mean uh, that their right to decide is somehow uh, diminished or overridden. Right? So 
So you can see this is in, definitely in the context of, uh, of women as concern and a rights question, right? So it's quite different, like it's a way different approach than this one. Now you may be more sympathetic to this, that's up to you. But the point is, is these are very different approaches to the problem. All right, so, um, and, and Sherwin admits that, you know, some justification, some reasons or whatever may look frivolous from a different position, but nonetheless, it is still the person's, uh, uh, the pregnant woman's right to choose and, and an unfettered right. Okay, and this right to choose, so the context now, so, so then she broadens this, the, the context is, uh, is, the, is also, a, the right to control one's sexuality. So this is, uh, you know, Sherman talks about not pregnancies are not always voluntary. Uh, many are not, um, and contraception doesn't always work. And, and so uh, women are often in subordinate sexual roles, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And also that women are, as Sherwin points out, that they're often educated to be subordinate. So nonetheless, she says that. Uh, even with all this considered, it's still an absolute right to make this distinct, this, uh, this uh, choice. All right. So um, now the abortion issue, and she even broadens it further in the, in the uh, sociological context um, of uh, how, you know, the sociological, not the biological context of how women are pregnant, but um, the, the sociological one. Um, Non-feminist accounts, in their abstract approach, ignore pretty well all of this, uh, of this of the sociological dimension. Perhaps with the exception of, uh, she says, uh, of rape, and some even want to ignore that, saying that that's irrelevant. Um, and so the big point is that the for sure when she says the uh, the non-feminist approach um, has a kind of logic of of ignoring everything that leads up to a pregnancy, and. Uh, uh, you know, failed contraception, coercion, educate, you know, bad education, dominance, and then just say, well, she consented, it was her choice, and, uh, and has, you know, take responsibility and live with it. So Sherwin, again, stresses that this is a, a very uh, abstract approach, it doesn't do justice to the lives of, uh, of women, and it's just basically the wrong approach to the abortion question. Um, and she says also that uh, there's no gender neutral account of this issue of pregnancy. It is exclusively, as she says, female territory, policies about abortion, discussions about abortion, ultimately only affect a subset women of the population. And um, it, if you're going to have uh, uh, discussions and policies that affect that a subset of the population, then uh, it should look into the territory of the lives of the people of that subset. So lives of women, again, have to be the uh, primary consideration. Um, the next couple of sections uh, are going to deal a little bit more with the fetus in terms of its moral standing and how it fits into the abortion issue. So there's going to be a little bit that will resemble this, but what does it look like uh, to examine the fetus from, again, through this feminist lens. So we'll take, take that up in the, uh, in the next video.